All right. Hello and welcome uh, to the uh, bi-weekly, I think it is still, uh, cross-plane community meeting. It is July 14th, 2022. Um, my name is uh, Dan Mangum and I am uh, standing in for Jared today. Um, I have not been around in these meetings for a while, so it's great to be back uh, and see uh, a lot of familiar faces um, around here. Um, and I'm going to go through the agenda uh, pretty much uh, as usual, um, but uh, feel free to jump in if uh, any patterns have changed since the last time uh, I hosted here. Um, but before we get started, uh, always want to give folks, uh, especially new folks, uh, an opportunity, if you'd like to, uh, to introduce yourself. And if there's anything you need or anything you're um, interested in or, or kind of reasons for, for why you showed up, uh, feel free. Uh, if there's no one, then we can move forward, but I'll give folks uh, a bit to speak up here if you like. Sure. Um, so I'm joining for the first time. I'm Shibashish. I go by Shibu. I'm coming from Adobe. Um, so we have been kind of looking at cross-plane for meeting some of our needs, um, doing some analysis, working with the AWS team. I know they have been joining this forum and uh, they've been keeping us updated. But I think uh, we have some interest here, so we want to kind of come to the session, track how the uh, how the progress is happening, and maybe hopefully ask some questions, take some help, and contribute uh, as we move forward. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the intro and welcome. Um, yeah, I can go next. Um, I want to escape us. I work for Shopify. Uh, I was looking for crossplane to at least help replace uh, Terraform because Crossplane and its declarative uh, format is quite, uh, looks quite nice in our opinion. But um, yeah, this is first time joining the meeting for me as well. So I'm just going to listen in the background a little bit, maybe ask some questions and uh, yeah, we'll see. Awesome. Welcome. I can go next. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, Nima Caviani. Uh, I work for AWS. I think I know most of you folks, um, but uh, pleased to meet those I don't know. Um, I'm here for because I'm told that Chris Har actually has got a nice demo for us. So I'm here for the demo and I'm curious to see what he has to share. Awesome. Welcome, Nima. And uh, Chris, Chris always has some uh, good stuff up his sleeve, so I'm sure it's going to be an awesome demo. Um, super excited as well. Alrighty, um, I also uh, dropped the link to the uh, doc. You should have commenter privileges with that uh, link. Uh, so feel free to add anything to the agenda as you see fit. And we'll make sure to uh, accept that change and cover it as we go through. Uh, also make sure to add yourself to the attendees list uh, up at the top uh, under July 14th as well. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen here and we can get into the agenda. Alrighty, so uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, do a quick uh, milestone uh, checkup on some uh, recent releases. Um, so I know yesterday, I think it was, um, let me move this out of the way here. Yesterday, uh, there was a cross-plane runtime uh, release. Um, I, uh, I, I think there was a, a few updates here. They're, they're linked here in the release notes. Um, I know there was also a, a change to some structs that I believe came uh, from this PR here. Um, and it had an impact on the, uh, the cross-plane release yesterday. Um, I don't think it should have any impact on downstream providers. Um, I don't have full context here, um, but I can grab that uh, from Nick uh, later on. Um, but just a heads up that I think there was a uh, decently significant change here. Um, so feel free to take a look at that and uh, reach out um, if you have um, any questions about that. Um, I believe it was actually strictly additive, but it's resulting in adding some things that uh, Core Crossplane uh, is not gonna honor. So anyway, um, I believe that should all be good for folks that are consuming that on the provider side. Um, so that release is out. Uh, so feel free to update to latest there. Um, there is, we're a little late on the cross-plane release for V1.9. Uh, Nick is running this one, and uh, I believe it's pretty close, um, but there were a few uh, issues open that he um, uh, was just tying up. Uh, but you can follow along with the steps uh, required uh, to release here. 
Um, so you see that we already uh, have uh, some of it in progress. Um, and I believe uh, Nick was targeting getting this out today. Um, so we should see um, this get closed out uh, by end of day today, I believe. Um, yep, uh, just a call out here to the uh, community calendar as well for um, folks who want to make sure to have things um, on their calendar when events are happening related to the Crosswind community. So that would include um, this meeting uh, as well as any special SIG meetings um, that are going on around things like composition or packages um, and things along that. So feel free uh, to take a look there. Um, next, we'll go ahead and move into uh, milestone uh, planning. Um, and I'm going to jump over to the roadmap board. Um, and I'm not certain that we're completely up to date here, but we can take a peek uh, at uh, some of the things that were first included um, in V1.9. Um, and, uh, and walk through those a little bit. Feel free to jump in if I'm covering something uh, that you worked on and want to give uh, some more context. Um, but I know uh, we got the one pager uh, move off was owning for pluggable web, web hooks uh, merged during this window. Um, and so it looks like um, that is in. And um, I believe this just uh, includes um, just the design doc. Um, no, actually it includes uh, as well integrating into the package manager. So this might actually be, uh, yeah, 1.7. So this one's a little bit old. Um, it looks like a number of these are a little bit old. Let's, let's move over to um, some of the in-progress ones then. Um, so I see the cross-plane scalability one. This has been top of mind for a number of folks here. Um, and uh, this one specifically, let me go ahead and pop this open, see if there's been any updates. Um, I know Nick has also been uh, driving this. For folks that aren't familiar with the uh, effort, uh, it is related to um, how the API server performs when we have a bunch of uh, CRDs installed. Um, so there is uh, a number of things that just went in recently. So um, let me find the pull requests. I think yesterday um, there was an update to the package manager. This won't be in V1.9, um, but it parallelizes uh, installing CRDs. Um, and so we'll, we'll have a number of Go routines going there and adding CRDs to the cluster during package install. Um, I know Bulat. Um, who is a, uh, this was actually his first contribution, I believe. So uh, pretty awesome contribution for our first one here. Um, I, uh, I believe he's doing some testing to reflect um, some of the, the um, improvements here. Um, I will say that this is not uh, going to be in this 1.9 release, right? So this was merged after code freeze. Um, so keep that in mind um, when taking a peek at any of this. And I'll hop back over to that roadmap. All right. Um, I see these two uh, ACK uh, issues in progress here. Um, is anyone on the call uh, familiar with the, the work that's going on there? If so, uh, you're more than welcome to uh, comment, but I don't have context and I don't think uh, move off is in this week. Um, so I'll defer to anyone else uh, who wants to give an update if possible. Alrighty. Well, we will uh, leave that one off uh, for today and we'll let move off uh, circle back around uh, and provide any updates in Slack on those if necessary. All right. I also see uh, custom compositions here. So I will hop back over, take a look at that. I know a lot of folks on this call are familiar with custom composition. Um, and we can see if there's any updates. Uh, this is one of our most uh, desired uh, issues, I think, here. Um, and so I know there's been um, some progress along this. Um, since Nick isn't here, um, I uh, don't think there's uh, much to update. Although I will say there's been some really nice um, uh, 
kind of like experience reports or, or things that folks would like um, around this functionality. I know this is top of mind for folks. Um, it did not land in 1.9. So um, I am guessing we'll need to bump that over uh, to 1.10 here. Um, but does anyone uh, have any updates specifically on this or any thoughts or questions uh, about the custom composition effort right now? Um, so how does this, is this different from normal compositions? I haven't looked at the issue itself. But... Yeah, so I can give a, a very quick overview, but essentially uh, the normal compositions, or you will, or, or compositions by default have a pretty constrained language, which is by design. Uh, we're definitely not uh, looking at introducing like control flow and some of those things into the composition vernacular. Um, so, you know, when comparing to a, a full programming language or something like that, you're not going to have things like loops. You don't currently have conditionals. Um, and so it's, it's basically strictly a templating patching system there. Um, what custom composition allows you to do is kind of bring your own uh, functionality as needed. Um, and there is an open design um, for how to do this, I believe. Um, I don't know if this is closed out right now, um, but you can take a uh, look at it. It is uh, linked from the, the PR for more information. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's hop back over. Uh, implement a mechanism for out of tree external secret stores. Um, so I, it looks like we have a linked pull request on this one. Um, but let's go ahead and pop it open and see where it is at. So uh, external secret store support uh, has been added. Uh, it is an alpha feature. Um, and I believe uh, it was um, included in 1.8. So it's been out for some time. Uh, it might've been in 1.7 even. Uh, what this is looking at is making this uh, pluggable, um, so making it such that you can support kind of arbitrary external secret stores. Um, I know there is a one pager that's still open here, um, and it looks like it does have approval from Nick and Muvafik. Um, so that's uh, two crossplane maintainers. So I'm guessing this is in a pretty good state here. Um, but if folks are interested in this, uh, feel free to take a peek. Uh, did anyone have any questions or comments about uh, the pluggable secret store model here? All righty, we'll keep cruising lighter along here. Last one here, it looks like uh, support patching from common data sources. So I'll grab this one and we can take a peek as well. I think folks are mostly um, familiar with this one. Uh, this is referencing a few different things, uh, but mainly the ability to say in a composition, just grab this value um, from something like a secret uh, or a config map or something of that nature. I don't think we have uh, any updates on this one uh, currently, um, but I know it's top of mind. I don't know if the custom composition work uh, is going to impact uh, this at all. Uh, it does look like there, yeah. So there's a little bit of guidance on how you can um, work around some of this. Um, looks like uh, this one was closed here. So let's see if there's any, yeah, it looks like it was just closed in favor of the aggregate issue. Um, so I don't see any movement on this one right now, um, but I don't have full context. So once again, if anyone wants to weigh in on that, feel free. All righty. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the highlights for uh, 1.9 and we can just pop these open and quickly look through them. Um, so this one is, I believe, referencing the um, parallelizing install uh, effort that we were just talking about. So uh, I already ran through that. Uh, 
but uh, if folks want to take a look uh, at how that was implemented, basically we just split off a few Go routines um, when installing and do it in parallel. Um, so that's been updated. Shout out again to Bulat for that great contribution. Let's see what we have here. Ooh, my computer is running pretty slow today. All right, so it looks like this one uh, was fixed. If you have circular dependencies um, within a given resource, um, and I believe that's actually what the um, the PR we looked at earlier um, was covering here. Uh, so I don't think any of the folks who worked on this um, are in office this week because uh, most of them uh, are on holiday um, in Turkey. Um, but I believe this does uh, give you some policies to be able to resolve references here. Um, there's some pretty good detail in the PR body, um, but if anyone here wants to add any more context, this one, feel free as well. Yeah, so for example, in provider AWS, it's now possible to reference security by self in the security group. For example, we have some needs from the guys who are using AWS Glue. For example, then you need security groups with self-referencing the same security groups. Mm -hmm. And I think we also include um, this uh, um, <laughs> cross-plan runtime in um, the latest uh, provider AWS release as well. Um, so it's possible now since the latest release in AWS provider. Awesome. Thanks for that, Chris. And as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, we do have a formal release of this out now with uh, 0.17 on cross-plane runtime. Uh, so feel free to pin to that one if uh, folks need to. All right. We'll see what we have here. Uh, patch a field into multiple array items. So it looks like this one uh, was uh, completed by John Edge. So uh, thank you to John uh, for some great work here. Um, I don't have a ton of uh, context on this one, uh, but it looks like the issue has a, a pretty good description. Um, once again, these will all be included in the release notes, but did anyone else want to give an update on this one? All right. Looks like it's pretty straightforward. All right. And it looks like we had one more here we can cover. Ah, uh, yes, I saw this one uh, as well. Looks like there is now support for regular expressions in patching, I believe it was. Let's see what this looks like. Yep, so you can use regular expressions now um, in string transformation in your patches. Um, let's take a look at this one. It looks like it's merged. Um, and yeah, once again, pretty self-explanatory, uh, just the ability to use capture, capture groups, uh, in your, uh, your string transforms here, pretty useful for things. It looks like the canonical one that's being used across a couple of these, uh, is, uh, doing it with, uh, ORNs from AWS, um, which can certainly be useful. All righty. So uh, once again, that 1.9 release uh, should be coming out uh, pretty soon here, uh, hopefully today. Um, now we're gonna jump into uh, provider releases uh, and it looks like we're starting off with provider AWS. Um, Christopher, I imagine you have some pretty good uh, context on this one. Is there anything you wanted to cover in this release? So I think the best thing was um, for, or, or what we introduced um, was from Manabu. He's also in the call, I think. Um, he implemented um, that we can detect and partition and regions uh, when you're using um, service account um, authentication in non-AWS partitions, for example. It's possible now with the provider and it unblocks a few folks. Um, this was very nice. 
and other things, I guess, was a lot of things um, fixing and adopting um, things after our latest SDK updates that, um, for example, the LSD cache version handling is now possible and so on. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, those sound like uh, really, really important updates there, especially the one uh, with the partition and region and uh, IRSA. Um, so thank you all for the, the great contributions there. It looks like this was a number of folks uh, first uh, contributions. Uh, so shout out to uh, all of y'all. Um, did anyone else uh, want to uh, give any other updates on this provider AWS release? All righty. Awesome work, folks. Looks like a pretty impactful one there. All righty. Let's see what the other one we have here. Looks like a provider Jet Azure release. I'll grab the link. We can pop it open here. Anyone uh, involved in this release who wants to give an update? Looks like Yuri, uh, you might have had a contribution here. Yep, so it's a very small release. Uh, it's basically driven by one of our bound customers. And I stabilized a couple of uh, uh, resources to unblock uh, uh, our customer. And one of the nested status field is, uh, is a change that's spanning over all resources. It's basically when you have a part of the spec, like uh, frequently in Azure, it's uh, identity. And it's like an inline set of fields. Uh, we had an issue that this inline set of fields was uh, not properly pop popul uh, populated in status, so there is no way to automatically consume, for example, identity automatically generated principal studies. So now it's all fixed and looks nicely and uh, uh, is properly propagated in status. So uh, it's pretty practical change. So that's it. That's very uh, narrow release just to awesome. uh, have these changes in action. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Yuri. Sounds great. Alrighty, and then it looked like we might have had a uh, provider jet AWS release as well. If I can get this pulled back up here. Oh, I think we had no uh, release. I think the community uh, wanted to have the release, um, but at the moment we have, or the, the, the maintainers have no time to cut the release. Uh, I think the last release is from March. And we had a lot of um, PRs merged since March and also a few open things to get, um, for example, securities, security group and security group uh, rules uh, running with the provider. And we wanted to have um, uh, the PRs reviewed, merged and cut a new release in the provider. Um, in the meantime, <laughs> I created a release uh, with my own uh, Docker account. So it's possible to use this in the meantime, if the guys have time to do this. Cool. Um, awesome. I assume that uh, some of those folks are, are folks who are out this week um, in Turkey, um, but I'll make sure to surface that as well. Um, thanks for uh, the, uh, the incremental availability there, uh, Chris. Um, that sounds super useful, at least so folks can uh, test it out at the very least. Alrighty, so uh, with the community uh, topics and updates here, it looks like we have a uh, podcast uh, with Victor. Um, so Victor making the rounds as usual. Um, this looks like a, a pretty good um, deep dive here. I think they're talking a little bit about uh, both cross-plane and it looks like just cross-plane focus. So that sounds awesome, specifically looking at uh, GitOps which I know is a uh, important use case for a lot of folks. Um, so I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this one, but I usually always uh, check out anything uh, that Victor is involved in. And it looks like it's a pretty uh, lengthy one too. So I'm sure there's a lot of great stuff here and uh, appreciate the uh, transcription as well. That's awesome. All right, looks like we have a blog post from Sasha. Let's take a look at that. Very uh, nice uh, styling here. Uh, so it looks like um, Sasha is giving uh, an overview of infrastructure self-service. Um, so it looks like this is both practical and philosophical to some extent. Um, 
So uh, nice, awesome. It looks like uh, goes all the way into packaging uh, and things like that. Um, this looks uh, super useful. Nice. All righty, um, have one uh, with uh, GKE uh, and Crossplane. Also, by the way, if anyone uh, who wrote any of these posts is on the call, uh, please feel free uh, to speak up and I'll definitely defer to you to cover. Uh, but it looks like uh, managing a GKE cluster from Crossplane on K3D, um, so kind of that local cluster um, managing uh, the, the cloud cluster there. So this looks uh, also uh, quite practical as well. So definitely encourage checking that one out. Um, ah, yes, I, I did read this one. Uh, I thought this was a great one, uh, talking about some multi-cloud uh, scenarios with Crossplane. Um, and so it talks a little bit about having abstractions and being able to target um, underlying uh, different concepts. Uh, goes through, talks about XRs, XRCs, pretty extensive post here, uh, would definitely uh, recommend for folks. They even go into talking about, um, you know, how we're using OCI images and that sort of thing um, and the benefits of that. So definitely uh, recommend this one. This is one I did get a chance to read here uh, and it was awesome. Alrighty, uh, and I think this one was just uh, published recently uh, from Autodesk, um, and Jesse uh, wrote this one up. Uh, and uh, there's this is based on a talk I believe that Jesse and Nick gave uh, a while back. This looks like it might be actually a, a transcription here, um, but uh, there's uh, some really interesting information included. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to read through this one, but I am familiar with the talk. Uh, comment that was at the uh, AWS Open Source uh, Symposium, uh, which sounded like I had some really neat stuff. Um, if anyone else has anything to share on that one, feel free. All right. Looks like, Chris, you added this one. Uh, did you have anything uh, to add on this one? It was in the community um, that um, he wrote the book about uh, end-to-end automatization with community. Kubernetes and Crossplane, and wow. he's looking for folks who want to read the book. You can you can ping him in the community, and you get the book for free, and uh, you can add your thoughts about this. Awesome, that sounds great. Definitely sounds like a good opportunity as well. So uh, always cool to see Crossplane featured in a book here. Thanks for adding that, Chris. All righty. Um, so some updates on uh, LFX mentorship program. Um, so uh, I am more familiar with the second than the first. Um, and so it looks like uh, this is just linking uh, to the content. I don't have much to share here, um, but uh, I'm sure uh, Jared and uh, Move Off could give an update. Um, as well as uh, uh, their mentee as well. I don't see any of them on the call here, um, but uh, basically the idea here is just to detect um, whenever we uh, have a breaking change in a CRD from version to version um, and do that in an automated fashion. So you don't have to you know, parse through release notes and things like that. Um, and then the one that uh, I've been a little more involved in here is uh, verifying that our pulling from private registries uh, is working well. So uh, I've been working with Jared and Perul here, um, and Perul has done some awesome work uh, getting back into uh, our cross-plane uh, testing. So um, I'll go ahead and open this up. So let me jump over here. So uh, we've had some uh, kind of like uh, periodic tests that have run against Crossplane and various providers for a period of time, but they got stale um, over a while. And uh, Perul has actually gone in and started to update these. And one of the things we want to do is get back uh, to uh, verifying upgrade paths from different uh, provider SKUs. Um, and so if we look at something like 
uh, this conformance. It's basically checking from some version to another version. Um, and this uh, test framework will be able to run uh, just those upgrade scenarios um, for each of these. Um, and so Perul is getting these kind of back into good health here and also adding support for testing against a private registry. So that's like um, if you're using ECR or a Google Artifact Registry or Docker Hub or what have you, um, we have different machinery that kind of honors the different authentication mechanisms for those various registries. And we want to make sure that that doesn't break over time. We re rely a lot on Go Container Registry, the underlying library. Um, and it has had some changes over time that has broken folks. Also, uh, just uh, auth in general is not standardized as part of the OCI distribution spec. So uh, there are some, uh, some intricacies to interacting with all of them. Basically, want, what we want to do is make sure that we're not breaking um, any uh, any components when we are updating that library or other parts of the package manager. So Perul has been doing an awesome job uh, leading that effort. All right, so I've seen some stuff coming by here uh, with the uh, fuzz testing, um, but I am not super in tune with what's up to date. Once again, Nick, Jared, and MoveOff, uh, I believe uh, have uh, the most context here even though I am tagged and I've been uh, not uh, paying too much attention, but it looks like uh, this has been merged uh, at this point. Um, and so it's basically just uh, someone working on adding fuzz testing to Crossplane, uh, which is obviously just going to um, uh, increase some, some quality here. Um, so I don't, I'm guessing no one on this call has uh, context on this, but it's great to see this ongoing. Um, we'll continue to drive quality there. All right, um, so I think uh, the first thing we have up here from a demo perspective uh, is uh, Christopher. So I'll go ahead and uh, stop sharing and let you take it away. Yes, let me check if I can share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. So, and now my VS code also, is this the correct uh, screen? Because I don't see the sharing button. Yep, we can high? see your IE here. Oh, okay. Okay, this is my VS code. Okay, um, I had a call uh, or a talk with Manabu in the community about how we can, we generate in our company, uh, our composition for our tenants on the clusters. And uh, for a few resources, so like uh, EC2 instances, EFS, ESA, KMS, RDS, S3 buckets, whatever, we generate our compositions out of the CRDs from the provider perspective. So that means um, I can show it afterwards uh, more detailed. So uh, in general, we um, say, okay, we want to generate um, in our group S3, for example, AWS DKB cloud. Um, we want to have the name bucket. Um, we want to use um, from the provider perspective for one beta one resource. And we have here um, in our you know, workspace, um, the provider in dot work um, directory. And um, here is the path to the um, CRD from the provider. And then we want to uh, create a composition named uh, bucket. Um, we have a few um, default uh, labels here and we can say, okay, this is a default um, composition. Uh, we want to use and then it's at the end very easy we can we have a make file available and we might make it generate the things um so it took a few seconds and if you see now uh the composition and the definition is uh, completely auto generated out of the crd from the provider so you can see here now um the api for v3 schema uh, completely auto generated out of um, the crd so like everything and um, also we add a few things um, afterwards. So let me go through the end of the file. So for example, we also adding um, objects uh, for observing things and um, that we can get the whole status from uh, a managed resource to the claims. Um, we add all the things here. And from the composition perspective, um, we auto generate all of our patch sets. So um, we have patch sets available for name, for common things, for our 
um, labeling things. So internal controlling tags um, we normally have on the claims and um, yeah, patching all of our managed resources with this. And then um, the interesting part now is uh, the parameter things because we uh, generate also the um, patch set for all of the available fields from a resource that we have everything available in claims and can uh, patch every field um, through the uh, managed resources. Um, yeah, so you can see then the resources here, all the patches are applied here. Um, yeah, um, the other thing we can do here, for example, if uh, you check or if someone changes today uh, composition thing, um, we can also have here uh, yeah, a second composition, uh, call it, I don't know, bucket for two, if we have changes uh, under the hood, and then let me check if we delete the things here and make generate again, then you can see that we also generating now the new composition um, with the new version. And then uh, it's available for tenants to test our new composition we have because um, with the versioning at the moment, there's a little bit, it's a little bit difficult to test otherwise. So we generate then everything under a new composition name. Um, what we're doing for this at the end, we have a small Go tooling available um, to fetch the things here. Um, we, we have also the options to override fields, skip fields um, for, um, for example, for RDS instances, if we find a field called KMS key, we, we also generate um, directly um, also the KMS key in the compositions and making the uh, reference selector together uh, automatically without um, that tenants needs to know this. Um, and then, let me check. We have a few JSON that things available. So we have a few functions. Um, I don't know, for example, that we can generate all of our controlling labels, all of our tagging things we want to have. And then at the end, it's, uh, it's a JSON net uh, thing um, where we get all things together and, gen and render all the things you uh, see in this make generate calls. Yeah, and afterwards we have also tooling available that we directly test everything what we generated here. So, um, so out of the providers, we using the examples and generate then the examples here uh, directly to use it um, in our cuttle testing suite. Um, and we can confirm that our generated composition is really yeah, usable. And after that, the tenants can use it in our clusters. Any questions? Um, can yes. you? Sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, can you customize these labels or are these labels uh, hard coded? This one? Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, yeah. When you, yeah, when you let generate. Me, uh, let me check. Um, oh, I think we have a few um, things available for this. I need to find it now. I think we have this, the generate functions available. At, at the end, we have here all of our um, controlling labels and generic labels. And the good thing, uh, for example, is if we introduce a new one, so I don't know, cross-plane community, yeah, we add this here, and then we very simple make generate again. And then you can see now that all of our um, composition are updated directly and we can push it to the uh, repositories and also the test cases are updated. Cool. Pretty cool. Um, this is really interesting. I have a few questions. One is a more high level question um, and feel free if you don't want to answer it, but I'm just curious, um, what was the motivation behind building this tool? So in general, the motivation was that we have at the end um, five or six people in the infrastructure team, but 400 developers requesting resources from us. And um, I think with the first resources, we starting generating or <laughs> copy pasting our own compositions together. And then we found out that, I don't know, with the second composition, we have the same patch sets like, okay, these are our basic labels, our annotations, whatever. And that's why we started this. 
And it's so generating all the things from the tenant perspective when they want to use easy resources, so like RDS, S3, whatever. So we, we, we don't want to generate our EKS composition, for example, because this is <laughs> much more complicated, I would say. <laughs> so you mentioned tenants there. Is it that you're, you're addressing like a single cluster multi-tenant environment um, setup for your users? Okay. So in general, um, we have, I don't know, more than 400 namespaces available on each cluster. And um, I don't know, they can pick whatever they want in uh, from the from the available um, compositions. Okay, yeah, it's it's interesting because you know we are working with with also with folks who are interested in single cluster multi tenant setups, um, and this idea of wrapping composite wrapping managed services in compositions came up in conversations before. And it's good to know that we're not the only ones actually looking at, you know, apart from potential solutions. So very cool. Other thing that I wanted to ask you, what are the configurability options that you have available? Like if I want to hide away a bunch of, you know, the configuration, the feed, the, the, the properties that are available on a managed resource and limit those in a composition, is it something that you can configure in that JSON file or some other place? Yeah, what we can do today is, um, let me check again, we can skip fields directly in the generate uh, YAML. So if you know the, the name of the fields, then there is a, then you can skip it. Then it's okay. not configurable from the, for the customers. So normally okay. we're doing the things with our RDS databases or with resources um, where we need to um, talk or thought about um, security or governance related things. So KMS key, encryption, whatever then we hide those fields for our tenants and we auto-generate the things then together. So if there's a KMS key field, then we add directly in the composition also a KMS resource that with the RDS directly a KMS key will uh, deploy it and connect it to this resource. Mm -hmm. and, and you're working with the, with the YAML specs for the CRDs in order to like as the input, right? Rather than the Go structs that these things yes. um, get generated by first, right? Any particular reason there? So we found out that um, in provider AWS in the early phase, it turns out that there are fields available, but the fields are not in the CRDs. So we decided only um, to use the CRDs because at the end, this are everything I can configure in the resource. So why not using the CRDs because I have not more available. Mm -hmm. I can use and how do you add those version changes? Like basically you pull a new version of the provider AWS in and then you apply the same thing to it? Yeah, the, the good thing is in the make files, we have the versions of the providers uh, configurable. And then um, if we update um, the provider, we see directly after the generation what happened with all of our compositions. And then we can decide if they are breaking changes for our customers. And then we can have a look what, what we want to do or if it's safe to go forward. Okay. Very cool. So my last question, and sorry, I'm just taking too long with like bombarding him with questions, but uh, um, this is super cool. And we are working on something similar, but any, uh, what is the prospect of open sourcing it potentially? I believe the community would be interested, right? Well, obviously you are, you have users, we have users. There are other folks probably out there. Any chance that it would go into like a cross-plane community um, org? Do we have such an org uh, at all? I think we do, right? Yeah, we, we, we are open to open source this. Um, I, we had a few talks today in the company about this. It's enough. So why not at the end? Um, we had not need at, at, at the moment to open source it because we don't <laughs> thought about that other folks wanted to use this approach. But no, we had to talk about this. So. I think we need to do a few assignments in the company that we can do it. It takes, I think, one or two weeks, and then we can open source it. In, in yeah, if, if you need any 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 help from us to actually motivate it further with, with the yeah. management in your company, I'd be I'd be happy to to be the cheer uh, leader. Uh, in okay. That, in that yeah, cool. Conversation. Too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Chris. I had a, a quick Just question I... here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll come after. Go ahead. All right, cool. I was just wondering, uh, you're cloning down the repo, right, to source the CRDs from there? Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I was the one another option, right, uh, that I think would be an interesting thing to ex explore because um, 
I mean, it's somewhat similar, but you, it might be lighter weight um, is, you know, in the like integration tests for all the providers, we started using that uh, uh, XP extract command, which you can point wow. at any uh, package and that'll just like spit out the full, um, uh, a single file in that case that's gzipped. Um, and you could source them that way if you wanted to, which would allow you to go straight from their registry. I love that you're using the CRD manifest directly instead of the ghost structs though, because I think one, like that's the ultimate form, right? So uh, it's it's good to target that. And um, uh, two, if you don't have access to the, the source, right? Uh, then it's nice that you can do something like pull the image and yank those out of there. So love, love what you're doing there. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's my question, just following up on what it said. It makes, it makes a lot of sense for many contexts, many contexts, and specifically when you're talking about multi-tenancy. I just wanted to kind of ask uh, a few more questions around the context you have. You said uh, you have a few compositions that you define, which is used by multiple teams. Do you have a good idea of how many compositions you are dealing with right now uh, on your clusters? So how many? Tenants? So how many yeah, compositions how many are... we have? So I yeah. think I, yeah. I, I shared it a little bit. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, round about 12 compositions at the moment available for our customers on the, on the clusters. And okay. I, would, I would say um, at the moment we handling round about per cluster 5,000 till 10,000 managed resources from this okay. com 12 cool. compositions. And this is, this is just to, uh, since you have, you guys are focusing on just AWS or you have other cloud providers that you create resources for? So in general, in our company, we have as the main um, thing, uh, provider AWS running, but we have also a few uh, custom providers running like uh, providers ZPA for Zscaler VPN stuff. And I think the other one is PagerDuty. But um, yeah, we're working on this also to bring uh, the uh, compositions available for our customers. Does it matter? And um, does it work with the other providers too, with Azure and yeah. you know GKE? It doesn't matter because um, we have the um, the CRD. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. So do you apply them dynamically to the clusters? How how does that process look like? Is one of the things that was a good idea is kind of pulling it from the zip files, kind of automate the whole end to end. Do you apply it uh, from with some cadence or you have automated end to end? How, how do you kind of run this in a continuous way? I will shortly answer this. I think in general, we are packaging all of our tenant composition together to configuration packages, um, bringing the packages to uh, ECR, so the OCI uh, things. And then uh, our um, approach on the clusters is um, we have running Flux and Flux will pick up the new version and roll out anything, and the rest is handled by cross plane core to bring out all the things. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for this. And yeah, it looks a very interesting project. So do let us know what's the thought around open sourcing and how we can go back and we'll love to hear more. Yeah. Awesome. Right on, Chris. That was awesome. Uh, as a reminder for folks, uh, these videos go up on YouTube um, afterwards. So as soon as they're available, we'll get it up there on the cross plane. Uh, account. It sounds like a lot of folks are interested in this, uh, as you should be. So that'll be a way uh, to share it out uh, if you're interested. Um, and uh, wanted to, uh, one, uh, I saw Jesse uh, jumped in here. Jesse just wanted to uh, give you a shout out. Uh, we, we talked about uh, your post there uh, a little bit earlier. Um, oh, great. So, Thanks. So, uh, yeah, that's in the, uh, the agenda there. Um, and then also, uh, Craig uh, is on the list here. And um, Craig opened up a discussion on Crossplane uh, around uh, success stories. Um, so Craig, do you wanna uh, comment a little bit on that? And I'll pull it up here for folks to be able to see. Yeah, thanks Dan. And hey everyone, it's my first time joining a Crossplane community call. I'm a product manager at Upbound, but basically I just wanted to uh, promote visibility for a proposal that I'm trying to spearhead where uh, I think the community would benefit if we had, um, you know, broadcasted out some success stories and basically case studies of um, people who are successfully using Crossplane in production, kind of like the uh, the Autodesk item that was on the agenda uh, a couple bullet points up. We would have more of those and they'd come out under the Crossplane blog and maybe link back to the main Crossplane website so that um, folks who are, you know, 
investigating crossplane can can see these use uh, use cases and, and that sort of stuff. So, if you uh, know someone who fits this uh, this description, or you yourself um, qualify for such a case study, uh, you know, reach out to me and and let's talk and um, see about getting case studies up. That's all. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Craig. This looks great. Uh, also, I love I love the I feel like the discussions on GitHub are like the most underused feature. These are super nice. So um, there's also a, a number of like really good questions folks ask in here. So uh, if you're ever interested, take a peek. Alrighty. Um, so we do have about five minutes here, and we have a few PRs to discuss or that need attention. Um, so I'll open up this one here. It looks like a number of other folks uh, have as well, and. I can I can make it very short. I cool. uh, bumped in the provider Jet AWS the um, provider from Terraform for AWS. Gotcha. And it turns out um, I have running uh, it locally, so with an existing resources from the old versions. So I exploit a few things, and then you see um, that for every resource uh, you get an error message that uh, the following required provider is not installed. And I have definitely no idea at the moment what I need to do if I simply make run the updated uh, provider locally on my machine. So mm -hmm. because normally I not install the providers or something like this, have no ideas and I need a little bit guidance from the guys who are familiar with the jet providers what I need to do now. Because for new resources, everything looks great locally, but not for the existing ones. So I don't know something weird perhaps in the PR or I missed something to bumping the version. Gotcha. Um, I am not uh, the, the person to ask on this necessarily, but I will say uh, I have messed with the jet providers a little bit. And uh, what I've done in the past to kind of like figure out what's going on um, when I'm trying to run locally is just jump into uh, the controller uh, or the image building for the controller and look at what they're doing in here and kind of try to like map over to that. This might be useful to like examine the paths here, um, but that's kind of the best uh, I have. I don't know, Yuri, would you have any insight here or um, you're the closest person I could think of to this? Yeah, it looks like, so the situation is the following. So you Chris already have kind of check out and isolated Terraform workspace, which references the old version of underlying Terraform provider after a great you already have a machinery which points to a new version, but uh, is, there is no automated way uh, to actually transfer the workspaces underlying. It looks like, at least in this case, it didn't work. I, I didn't see the, exactly this, um, the same situation before, but well, the safest way is like delete orphan and recreate, but it's obviously ugly, right? As in a, any kind of real, real environment. But if you need a fast workaround, yeah, delete policy orphan is the way yeah, it should recreate the stuff. But definitely something to uh, to debug. Uh, ping me afterwards. I'm interested to look in, into this one. Uh, it's it's something um, crucial uh, uh, okay. for potential further upgrades. Yeah, thank you. For Would be cool to catch up together um to 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 share a little bit the, the knowledge of this would be great <laughs> cool sounds good awesome thank you yeah. thanks folks thanks for bringing that up all right looks like we have uh, one more here and just in time um let's take a peek at that yeah i can i can so we we, we learned it the hard way the last week with the latest uh, versions of crossplane mm -hmm. it's not possible if you have two composite field paths in a patch set that this is working so you can't uh, do two composite field paths in a patch set and uh, the problem is then if you patch the things to the um, resources um, <laughs> you um, investing a lot of time and you see nothing, no debug message, like nothing. Uh, and the only thing is uh, to um, yeah, make the um, two composite field pass patches without uh, a patch set, then mm. everything is working. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is this, uh, is this a regression, a uh, confirmed regression, or is it, was it not working beforehand? I think one, one guy added in this um, issue list that is working with a 1.4 version, 
of Crossplane, but gotcha. not just the newest one. So yeah, we also coming from 1.4 and updated, I think the last few weeks to 1.5, 1.6 in production. And then we figured out that all of our two composite field parts are not working anymore. If you use it and patch it. Yeah, so it would be cool if someone has an idea what it is um, to take care of this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, this looks like a critical issue here. Um, so all surfaces, especially with our new release going out uh, today, hopefully, um, we might need to do a quick round of patches, um, unless if we can immediately identify this. Um, this is super helpful, though. Um, I don't know if uh, Callum is on the call, but thank you for narrowing it down. Uh, that obviously makes it much easier to find out what went wrong there. Um, so appreciate that. Just in time. <laughs> All righty. Yeah, perfect timing. Uh, appreciate everyone uh, showing up today, especially uh, folks who are newer. Uh, thank you again, Chris, for the awesome demo. Uh, love when we can show stuff off in the community meetings. Uh, also appreciate y'all letting me uh, run this meeting again. Definitely have missed uh, being in these. So it was great to see all y'all. Uh, and thank you for all the impact you have uh, in the Crossplane community. All right. With that, have a good rest of your week, folks. Thanks, Dan. See you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.